I'm getting set up. I'm getting set up quick because the sun is going down. And I only got like an hour and a half before sunset. Not staying until dark. Just gonna fish till sunset, get on out of here, go home and eat some dinner. This is the first time I've fished with set rigs in a while. It's been two or three weeks. It, it has been a minute. I've just been fixated on throwing lures because that has been what's working for me. So I've been stuck doing that. And lately, it's not producing like it has been. So back out here with set rigs, which makes me happy. I love fishing evenings with set rigs. It's some of my favorite fishing to do. In the spot I'm fishing today, there's like a, a break in the sandbar. It's hard to see. There's a sandbar here, a deep trough, and then there's another sandbar right here with a trough, but there's a, it cuts through here. And that means all this water in this, this trough is moving this way. All that water's coming out. You can even see a little bit of a current out there, the rippled water. And here's a view right in front of it. You can see how the water in this area has a different texture to it. All right, got a single drop rig here with 15 pound mono and a number six owner Mutu light circle hook and just a live sand flea. And I'm gonna fish three spots of this rip. I'm gonna fish this, this behind this sandbar, in the rip, and the other side. And I'm gonna put this one right behind the sandbar. Right there. Let that sit. All right, got the same setup on this one. And I'm gonna put this one on the other side of where that rip current's at. And this is the side I think the fish are gonna be on. And this time of year, summertime, I prefer using lighter tackle. The fish are a little fin more finicky because there's just so much food out here. There's like no competition. So if they don't like the way it looks, they're probably not gonna eat it. But just in case they are preferring some color, I have a pompano rig with a pink bead, simply on bottom. And the top float is just a pink and white float. And I have shrimp just to give some bait variety. And I'm gonna put this rod in the rip. I'm gonna put it in the actual rip current in that moving water out there. Out a little further than my other rods too. And let's see what happens. I also brought my inshore rod and I just have a Carolina rig, half ounce egg weight on there and just another small number six hook. And I'm gonna throw it in real close here on, the, on this side of the sandbar and see if there's any whiting hanging out close to shore. Oh, that was quick. Oh, that rod went off like right away. I just threw it, I mean, I just turned my camera off everything. Oh man, he didn't hook up. All right, well, they're in close. They are definitely in close. All right, and uh, I need sand fleas. Of course I need sand fleas. While I'm looking for sand fleas, I'm gonna throw out a piece of shrimp. It's a big piece of shrimp, but whatever, it's all I got right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of break a little bit of it off, make it a little more bite size. We put it right back in that spot. I mean, that was instant hookup. All right, tap, tap. There he is. Oh, he just pulled on it. Go. All right, he hooked up this time. Sweet. A little whiting. It's not a big one. First fish of the day right there. He's just a little dinker whiting. He might be eight to 10 inches, but I'm gonna get this dude back. And it just goes to show, fish close to shore. That inshore rod has been getting all the action since I've been here. I've only been here like 10 minutes. All right, I'm tired of walking back and forth with my cart. I got my cart down the beach a little bit. I'm on like a slope, so I can't really put my cart where I usually would. So I'm bringing the bait cooler over here. And I'm just cutting them up. And on the intro rod, I make it a little smaller. There we go, right where I want it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it bowed over a lot. Oh, I'm not used to using my inshore rod in a, a sand spike like that. <laughs> nice. That might be the same whiting though. Oh man, these are the squirmiest fish, man. This guy, God. But another nice little whiting. It's about the same size, not yet keeper size. Hopefully there's some bigger ones out here. All right, get another piece of shrimp. But the same spot, that's the money hole right there.
I'm gonna move this one in too. Forget it. Put them where the fish are at, right? Yeah, get some more shrimp on there. Put this one in close as well. This one just got hit. I was over there fiddling with my camera, changing the battery. All right, what we got, what we got? Another whiting? Nice. Man, these, the fall whiting's gonna be, be good. He hit that single dropper with a piece of shrimp on it. Another undersized whiting, but I'll take it. Fishing's been real slow for me lately, and it's good to come out here with some set rigs and actually catch some fish for once, but we'll get, oh. He crapped and squirmed and I just let him go. <laughs> I'll get that dude back. All right, buddy. See ya. Get big for the fall. All right, well, let me cut up another shrimp, get it ready. And I'm actually cutting the bottom off just to make it a smaller profile so it'll fit in their mouth. Just like that. I like going through the skin. I leave the skin on. I like going through the skin. I feel like it helps keep it on there a little better. And then I'm just gonna put this one Close in again. I mean, just right there, that's it. That's where they're munching. And I'm gonna do a bait check on this rod. It has not had a hit in a minute. There's still shrimp, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a fresh piece on. And I'll bait check all my rods up. Wait, wait. Got a little pull over there. Probably took the shrimp. There we go, okay, okay, nice. That's a, that's a hookup right there. No? All right. Well, luckily I have a piece of shrimp already in my hand. All right. Oh my God. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm gonna check that bait before I get rudely interrupted. And then I got interrupted right again. All right, he hooked up this time. Oh, a little baby pump, man. Awesome. That is definitely a baby pompano. When they're this size, they almost look like permit. They're so wide. It's not a keeper pomp. It, it, I guess I'm catching all the babies today, but that is a tiny little pompano. That might be one of the smallest I've ever caught on a set rig. See you, buddy. All right, third attempt at a bait check. Can I do it? Surely this rod's like right at shore by now. And I'm taking the sample off. It is still there. Nothing's eating samples right now. Well, that sun is going down quick. It's amazing how fast the time goes by when you're fishing. I mean, it's just like an hour out here is like 10 minutes at work. It's it's almost unfair. I, I, you're at work feels like eternity. Why is fun make time go by so fast? This time he hooked up. He's thrashing. He's swimming in pretty fast. What we got? What we got? It's a ladyfish. Third species of the day. And that's what a ladyfish looks like. These guys are notorious for being out here in the summertime. But they put up a good little fight. They're not good to eat, but they make an excellent bait. At least I don't think they're good to eat. Some people eat them, but I don't recommend it. I have tried them. All right, get back out there, man. Nothing is touching sand fleas today. That sand flea has been there since I got here. So I'm taking it off. I'm done with sand flea. Put a couple pieces of shrimp on there and get it back out. Now the whiting bite has slowed down. So I'm gonna move this one out a little further. Get it back out past the sandbar. See what happens. This ride hadn't been hit the whole time I've been here. Oh, it did hook up. I saw it bend and I was just reeled it in, figure something took my bait. <laughs> Didn't even know that little dude was there. I saw the rod bend over just a little bit and I figured, hey, something took my shrimp. 
But that's good we're seeing some whiting, even if they are small, because the fall whiting bite is usually pretty good. And all these babies are just gonna grow up. Whiting grow pretty quickly. I'm not sure the rate at which they grow at, but I know they grow faster than some of the other fish in the area. So all those babies, that one over there, I think, getting, yep, it's getting hit. So let me go get that. But all those babies are gonna grow up for the fall. Something's just playing with it. Let's just check it. Oh, no, there he is, there he is. All right, there's a fish there. He just kind of sat down and I guess just chewing on that shrimp. No fight at all. Oh, you know what? That's a good whiting right there. There he is. There's the keeper. He didn't fight at all until he got to shore. Oh yeah, he's a hog. He's heavy. And those number six hooks, I love them, man. They they get in there and they're they're in there. They are hard to get out. Nice solid 14 inch whiting right there. He is a keeper for sure. Good and fat. And he was out past the sandbar, so I'm gonna set that rod back up, get it back out there. But awesome catch. He's the first keeper of the day. And that was on this rod that I just moved past the sandbar. So I'm gonna get it back out there. And I'm, not, I'm just gonna leave my other two where they're at. I'm not gonna move them out just yet because my 12 foot rod's kinda in that zone. So just lob it out, just past the bar out there. And that's what I'll do. I'll just keep moving my rods into different zones until I locate the fish. And once I figure out where they're at, focus a couple in there. When that bite slows down, I'll spread them back out. When I catch a fish in a different zone, I'll focus there. There we go. Finally, it's been a minute. Bite slowed down there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Good head shakes on them. That's probably a whiting. That's what it feels like. All right, he's running in now. Nope, nope. That that is the sign to leave right there that's what that is that is a catfish big fat catfish he was a feisty one too when the catfish start biting that means it's time to head home i don't touch catfish i use my pliers to remove the hook and to put them back because they have this barb on their dorsal fin and their pectoral fins are poisonous and uh, they, they're shaped like arrowheads. They, they go in, they don't want to come out, and they'll mess you up. I've heard guys that have gotten hit by them, and uh, they got to get it surgically removed, and it's a pain for, for like a, a month even. So I don't handle them. I don't touch them. I use my pliers. feels so good to come out here in the evening for once and do some set rigs. I don't know why I haven't been fishing in the evening. That's pretty much how I've always fished. But here lately, I've been trying to go out in the mornings and go out in the middle of the day, and it just hasn't been working for me. I am an evening fisherman. This is where I belong. But overall, I consider this a pretty good day out here. I didn't catch a lot of keeper fish, but I got on a good whiting bite, even though most of them were undersized. I mean, you can eat them if you want to. I just limit myself. Anything below. 12 inches, I don't really keep. It's not It's not worth it to me. It's just like a little nugget of meat. And definitely go with the light tackle. I really think it helps this time of year. The fish really are, they're just that much pickier just because there's so much food out here. Everywhere you look, there's bait swimming around and there's no competition for food right now. I promise, there's none. There's not a ton of fish and there's a ton of bait. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care and tie lines.